We're doing a test. Okay, there's a bunch of ways to back sweeten. There's different products you can back sweeten with. Today, we're actually going to test sugar, honey, and erythritol in a mead. And it's not so much which is best or which, you know, it's more, what are the differences? Can we tell much difference? And can we tell which is which? This comes about because in a recent video, I think it was the fig wine one year, someone said the reason I didn't like it was because we used erythritol to sweeten it and they felt it gave an odd flavor. Now I know stevia does. We've not put stevia into any brews, but I do use it in tea on occasion. In some teas, it's a little funky. Other teas, it actually works kind of nice. But erythritol is more like sugar. So I'm actually curious to see the sugar erythritol combination. The honey is just there kind of as a control. Since this is mead, sweetening it with honey makes the most sense. So what we have done is this. I measured out, well, let me start with the sugar because it makes the most sense. 10 grams of sugar, because that's about a 1.010 gravity in the 12 ounce bottles that we're doing here. The exact gravity isn't really important. It's the relative sweetness that's important. And that's why I used 10 grams of sugar. And I know that erythritol is 75% as sweet as sugar. So that means I need to use 1.33 amount of erythritol to sugar. So that means 13.3 grams. So if you're following along, that's 10 grams of sugar, 13.3 grams of erythritol, lots of numbers here, it'll be explained. And then honey is also about the same. It's actually uh, 1.31 times the amount of sugar. So I have here 13.1 grams of honey. I hope you appreciate the tiny, tiny amounts that we are using here. I had to use my jeweler scale to get these exact measurements. And it's just, it's, it's an amazingly tedious process. That's probably why I'm a little bit <laughs> ramped up today. But anyway, the first thing I wanna do is mix up the honey version. And it's a little bit complicated. So what I'm gonna do. First off, the mead that we're using is Brian's fastest mead video yeah. recipe. So, so it's a basic mead, very much just a straight traditional. There's no extra adjuncts. It's 13.5% and it's a couple months old. I'm just gonna pour about four or five ounces of this off, maybe a little bit more than that. By the way, for those of you freaking out about oxidation, these bottles are gonna get drank today, okay? We're not letting this we're not letting this stuff sit at all. I almost said something completely different a second ago. <laughs> and the reason being, we'd have to pasteurize them in order to make this safe, okay? Except for the erythritol, obviously. So they're probably gonna get drank today. That's why we're using very, very small amounts so that there's no unsafety. If we were leaving this for even more than a couple of days, we would there's be no using way I'd an pour it. Entirely different process. Yeah. So for this, don't worry about it. Um, we're not gonna worry about oxidization because it takes more than a day to affect it. So the honey, this is a tiny, tiny amount, but I wanna get it all in there and I need to mix it thoroughly. That's why I'm putting it into a separate container. Okay, the honey is all mixed up. So now I'm going to pour it into a bottle. It feels wrong to do this, but I- Wrong, wrong, you know, wrong. Yeah, so I have my honey mead solution here. I'm just gonna pour this right in. And then I'm just gonna pour in the rest of this mead to fill it. I'm filling them all right to about the neck so that I can still give a little bit of a mixy mix this way. Okay, and just to make things even more clear, we have an H, so this is the honey version. Then on this one, let's do sugar. So for this one, I'm gonna put an S on there. Super mead. Super mead. And dry funnel. Dry funnel, because if I use a wet funnel, the sugar will stick. Is that the sugar one? I thought the middle yes. one was the sugar one. I moved them. Oh, you moved them. The one that has more. Ah. See, this one is more, yeah. so it's the erythritol. You can tell the sugar. crystal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they look different too. So that's our sugar. Add mead. Wet funnel. Oh, no, I can just use this. Well, I'm just going to put it there so you can see for your measurement. We're filling to the same measurement. The idea isn't to be super precise, but it's to be as close as we can so we have roughly the same sweetness level in each one. And now I want to mix that up, so I'm just going to... Do the shaky shake mix. While she does that one, I'll fill up the erythritol. So let me mark that with an E. This is straight erythritol, not erythritol with monk fruit. Erythritol with monk fruit actually is uh, the same sweetness level as sugar, so you don't need to do any funky calculation. Like I said, 13.3 grams of erythritol going into our 12 ounces of mead. Okay, we have a little bit of leftover mead. We'll save that for later. Now a little more background on this in case you're curious. The idea behind this is if you use erythritol or monk fruit or allulose, they're all non-fermentable sugars. So you don't have to pasteurize if you back sweeten with them and your yeast hasn't hit the tolerance yet. 
Whereas sugar and honey, you do have to pasteurize. So the curiosity is, well, is it significantly different to do that? Or is sugar actually a better sweetener? Is honey actually a better sweetener? We don't really know. I'm, I'm actually genuinely curious. I think this is an interesting test. I'm sure somebody else has done it, but you know what? Until you do it yourself, you really don't know. Is this a definitive test? Oh, heck no. No. Heck no. There's a million variables. This is just the way we are doing it. Sure. In every brew, I'm sure it'll be completely different. And Some... there's possibilities that aging may change it further. Yeah. The pasteurization, which is a different video, may change it further. So many variables, so many things, but yeah. this is just a really basic... Whoops. In this scenario, is there a difference? We will find out. Mix. So something interesting, I've always thought erythritol blended really well into liquid. This seems to be having trouble. I need to do a little swirl for, because yeah. it was blobbed up with the sugar. We are no way past the concentration level that this should be at, but it seems to be having trouble breaking down. Like I still see crystals. Uh, it looks like it might be breaking down. Yeah, now. I think it's... Yeah, of course, as soon as she gets it, it goes away, right? So yeah, the idea is we use the differing amounts because they're different sweetness levels. So each one should be sweetened roughly almost exactly the same. Yeah, roughly, roughly almost, almost exactly. exactly. Yeah, how's that sound? That's, that's a new term. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to do a, as much of a blind taste test as we can. We're gonna fill two glasses from each bottle and then mix them up. I'll leave the room, she mixes them up, and then when I come back in, I'll mix them up and they just get all mixed up and we see what happens. All right. I'd, I'd say that's pretty good. So let's let's pour some there. let's sure. pour some glasses. Okay. So that is E. Here are the E glasses. E glasses. <laughs> so I've marked them on the bottom. You can see that is an H glass. Uh, so we have E glasses, H glasses, and S glasses. So that way, when we're done with all our mixing, we'll be able to determine. Oh, that was actually honey that you were drinking rather than erythritol or sugar. Right. That way we can. Try to guess which is which. H. 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 You know what, I'm gonna set these glasses to the side because the order that they're in now doesn't even matter anymore. We're science adjacent here today, folks. <laughs> but I do need a level so that they're about the same. My oh so neat pouring approach. All right, so now we have our six glasses. They're more or less still a sort of in order, I think, at the moment. But I'm gonna leave the room and let Derica mix these up and then she's gonna leave the room and I'll come back in and I'll mix them up. Be back in a moment. Okay. I have no idea what order they were in to start off with, so there you go. <laughs> Your turn. So did you ever hear the theory with cards that if you shuffle enough times, you put them back in order? I wonder if we can actually manage to do that. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I'm just messing around. But I have no idea what's what anymore. Okay, safe. So we're gonna do this in a very non-scientific way, as we <laughs> like to do. What we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna taste them and we're gonna try to say this one and this one are the same or that one and that one are the same, that kind of thing. It's a little more difficult when there's six glasses, okay? When there's four glasses, it's easier. But when there's six, it's a little more difficult. But we're gonna see what we can do. So, no, 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 we should both taste the same one at the same time. Okay. Last time we tried this, we were tasting different ones and it just got chaotic, it was nuts. Okay, well don't tell me what you think it is. Okay. Until I get mine, so that way we can have our minds set before influencing each other. Okay, moderately sweet. I'm not getting extra honey character, mm -mm. making me think it's probably not honey. But without having anything to really go off of next to it, it's difficult to say. I would I would agree. I would say that's either sugar or erythritol. I don't okay, really so know. we're going to put that in the sugar or erythritol pile. I, I feel like I'm leaning towards erythritol. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm kind of thinking it tastes a little bit artificial. Do we need water? Yeah. Let me get water. We have water. That one tastes a little bit more honey to me, but it's one of those you gotta try next to each other. Yeah, I would say that's either honey or sugar. <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't remember what what the mead tastes like originally, even though I just drank some water. Oh, I think that's honey. Okay. Okay, so we're thinking this might be erythritol. This one might be honey. 
I think that one's honey too. Which is possible they're next to each other, like I said. If you mix them up enough, I really should have made bigger pours. Mm. So, so, so far, we think those two are honey. It's either sugar or erythritol. I'm leaning towards erythritol, but it could be sugar. I think it was sugar. I'm gonna taste these two together. I think you're right. Maybe. Of course. Cool. The difference between the honey and the others is significant, but the erythritol and the sugar aren't that different. Mmm. I think it was erythritol, personally. Yeah? It's very hard to tell. Ah, went down the wrong pipe. Uh oh. Don't breathe your, your mead, people. Learn from our mistakes. <laughs> okay, so we're thinking that these two are erythritol, these two are honey, these two are sugar. I I want to do a side by side on these guys to make sure. Now we may have appeared to be very definitive in our answers. Honestly, I I didn't feel that there was a very strong flavor difference. It was very subtle to me. Even the honey, I noticed. Well, even the honey seemed subtle to me. I think, I think we have them separated properly. Let's make sure. It's a question of which is the sugar, which is the erythritol. Not so much are they the same, because I think those are separated properly. The honey has a slightly unfair advantage. It's more viscous. Yeah. It, it's, it's enough to be noticeable, but not a huge difference. That, again, because it's a mead, the honey character's already there. Yeah. So adding more honey character doesn't make it super obvious that that's what you it, added. It doesn't. And it's that was an interesting thing for me is that people are constantly asking in the comments, so what if I did this, what if I did that? And I would always just answer, well, you can, um, of course you can do that. It's just going to be a different flavor. Right. But this test is telling me out. that the flavor isn't necessarily that greatly different. Okay. Side by side, we tasted a difference. The difference is less than 10% across the board, I would say. The honey is probably the biggest, like this one in here is probably the biggest change from these two. But let's see how we did. So we said that th these two were erythritol. Erythritol and erythritol. Look at that. We got two right. We said that these two were honey, sugar, sugar. And, and sugar. sugar. See? That makes these two the honey. honey. Holy crap, we yeah. actually chose sugar over the honey. Okay, I, I will be <laughs> honest. When I tasted one of these, after we had already decided that that was the honey profile, I was like, but this seems like a honey profile to me. And I went to typical Derica mode and just let Brian talk. Because honestly, if I talked as much as Brian talked, nobody would ever be really saying anything. I they? disagree, those are mislabeled. <laughs> Seriously, the sugar one is more viscous and is bringing out character better than the honey. Now, different honeys may vary too. This was Bevy's honey, mm -hmm. actually. So this is a really good quality honey. But we did notice enough difference that we got all three categories correct as far as which two were which two. Mm -mm. You think so? All right, well, now that we know that these and are the, the same. the very, very front of the sugar versus honey. I'm gonna pour them all together and see. Because this is the honey section now, right? Yeah, so yeah, I have to remind myself. At the very front, I am getting an ever so slightly perception of non-creamy honey texture. But then it immediately goes into that honey texture. Where this, at the very beginning, I get the honey texture. I don't get the little bit of discordance. I, I can agree with you. It's so minutely sliced yeah. though. Now keep in mind too, we only went to like a 1.010 gravity, which is moderately sweet, medium sweet. Some people might think it's too sweet. Some people might say it's not sweet enough. Yeah. Had we gone a lot sweeter, the differences would probably be more pronounced. What's amazing to me though, the erythritol does taste a little bit artificial to me. 
Yeah, and somebody had mentioned in the comments that the reason why some people don't like erythritol is because it has a cooling effect. So I had that in my head, and I was looking for that cooling. I don't get the cooling effect. Because I was thinking kind of like menthol, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't and really get that. I, I felt like I was putting that term on the offness that I was getting from it. Mm. It wasn't very strong, and I my brain was fumbling around trying to figure out what it was, but it was like, okay, yeah, I could sort of see maybe that's a cooling. Um, what I'm actually getting is kind of a bitterness at the end. It right. makes it taste a little bit off as the easiest way to describe it. Because if you're used to a sugar sweetened or a honey sweetened product and then you have erythritol, it doesn't taste quite the same. It's yeah. just a little bit different. And I think in this case, it's actually working against the honey character. And I, I think, it's working against the positive aspects of the honey character. That's what and I mean. it's, in, it's enhancing that, the bitterness that's inherent yeah. in fermented honey. This doesn't taste anywhere near as sweet as these two. Yes. Yes. It really doesn't. Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, we used more erythritol than we used the other two yeah, we did to make up for it. And by we, I mean he did math. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Interesting test though. And these things always turn out differently than you think they're going to. Like I thought for sure we nailed honey, but hey, you know, that's that just shows how similar they can actually taste when there's honey in them. Now, had this been a straight wine and we put honey in and sugar, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to tell. I, I feel that I can agree with that, that mm -hmm. the honey notes would come forward more in a brew that didn't have honey already in it. Yeah. But because this was a mead and it already had honey in I'm it. I'm still convinced that these two are backwards. We were just bumping, they're not, babe, we did that. <laughs> This is science! They're See, so close. He derailed me. We, we were bumping the sweetness, and so the honey and the sugar just bumped the sweetness, and it was already a honey brew, so you really couldn't tell the difference so much. Now, the reason why I'm thinking these are backwards, and they're not, obviously, is here's, here's an interesting thing. The one sweetened with sugar, sugar simply sweetens, doesn't add flavors. Honey is acidic. It's adding an acid flavor to it, making it less sweet seeming and making it where the sugar version actually tastes better to me than the honey one. And that's why I keep thinking that that's the honey because it tastes more like honey. But the acidity is actually working against it. And it, that's shocking. I did not expect that at all. Yeah. That That's my guess, that that acidity is working against it. Kind of like what the erythritol did where it counteracted the effect of the honey. Because remember, we weren't sure if it was erythritol or honey. We were calling this one sugar. We thought this was honey, this was sugar, and this was erythritol. So we were debating between honey and erythritol uh, as to which was right. which was actually sugar or erythritol. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. That they had a similar effect on that slight bitterness on the back end. I think it's the acidity of the honey yeah. enhancing that. that and then sense. the erythritol enhanced it a little bit more, so, whereas the sugar didn't. So what did we prove here? Well, Absolutely nothing. Nothing. But <laughs> I think if anything that we proved here is that our statement of back sweetening with just plain old white table sugar is the best neutral sweetener yeah. has been verified to be true in this Absolutely. case. Absolutely. And I, it's funny because I've always said, oh, I don't like to use regular white sugar because it doesn't add anything. It doesn't bring anything to the party. And that's kind of the point when it comes to yeah. back sweetening. It doesn't add acidity. It does. It just changes the sweetness. If that's all you're after is sweetness, it just changes the sweetness level without changing the acidity or the tannin level. Interesting stuff. Science. Gotta love it. Nonetheless, but no, we these tests would not be complete if we didn't do this. The last time, last time we did one of these, we didn't mix them all together, and someone was very upset with us. So they're all mixed together. Will we taste any difference? I doubt it. It'll. I'm detecting sugar, honey, <laughs> and erythritol. <laughs> I'm detecting BS. <laughs> it actually tastes nice. It took down some of the acidity level, and it's it's nice. I mean, here's the thing. All three of these were good. I think if you handed me any one of them, and then the next day handed me another one, I probably wouldn't know much different. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we like to pride ourselves on being able to pick flavors out and things like that. They're just, there was a difference, but it wasn't so significant as to be significant. Right. I mean, it was, it was obviously enough that we could match them. Right. 
But it wasn't enough that we got them right in what we yeah. thought they were. <laughs> I'm a little upset that we got the honey and sugar backwards. But I think I think the acidity is what changes it. And I think that that's kind of where I was getting that from. But hey, if you like these tests, let us know. There's other tests that we can do too. Let us know what you'd like to see in the comments below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.